Got it. All right. Now, this music CIA, where it appears where it appears as though you're at an art festival. Before we run this, give us the background. What are you doing there? What is it? What are you narrating? And then we'll play the clip. Sure. So this is Miami Art Week that I was at. This is the largest arts festival in Miami. Miami is the gateway to Latin America and the Caribbean, the largest CIA station house in the entire country for the entirety of the Cold War was called JM Wave. It was the CIA station house in Miami. And so this is, it's sort of a, a culturally significant event in Miami with thousands of, of artists, both visual art and musical art. And so I like to do these sort of walk and talks wherever I go to sort of explain some of the intelligence or national security ties to a region. So I thought this was sort of a fun opportunity to explain that in Miami. Okay, uh, Sonia, Music CIA. So it automatically creates this cultural cleavage point to draw people towards a Euro-Atlantic axis. If they're listening to Taylor Swift or if they're listening to Moby, they're not listening to Russian music. They're not listening to Chinese music. They're not listening to Cuban music. Although the CIA has made inroads to try to co-op Cuban rap music uh, quite profusely through the National Endowment for Democracy, uh, incubating uh, Cuban art collectives. So when you have these big art festivals, they're a prime opportunity to draw people into a cultural affinity that can then be mobilized later in time. These people are much more likely to attend mass protests uh, and in large events to take to the streets when they're already used to going to large concerts and things together, especially in places that are more culturally repressed where you don't tend to have these more often. No, I can't I can't resist asking you about Taylor Swift because as we speak, she is the hottest phenomenon in the country, maybe uh, in the world. Does the CIA have any role in her success? Well, I don't have any direct evidence of the CIA's role, but there is a very curious oddity that came to light just months ago, which is that Taylor Swift's entire discography, the rights to it, were all purchased by the Carlyle Group in tandem with, with a George Soros investment fund. So the Carlyle Group, if you're not familiar, is, is sort of the private equity arm of the, of the Iraq war. 